So I just arrived in Saudi Arabia and first thing I see ATM here, you don't even need to get out of the car. How yeah. amazing is <laughs> this is the future. Look, here we are. And the money. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's too hot, so we don't need to get out of the car. What for? Yes. Saudi comfort. Okay, so first bad experience in Riyadh. I just arrived to my hotel that I booked this morning and it got confirmed after traveling for the whole night from India. Actually, I didn't sleep at all in the past two days, so as you can imagine, the only thing I want to do is arrive in the bed and sleep until tomorrow. None of the staff at the reception speak English. They tell me there's no rooms, that they're full, and I'm like, what are you talking about? I have a reservation. It got confirmed by you. And also, does anybody here speak English? And he's like, no, no, mafi, mafi, mafi room. Oh my God. But on the other hand, I want to talk about how amazing Saudis are. Like literally, I've just been in this country for what, half an hour? The guy at the passport control, he was so nice, so welcoming. He even started telling me about aid, which is today, by the way, last day of Ramadan. And then after they checked my passport, like there was like a guy, like a guard, and he was also like, welcome to Saudi Arabia. Like you just feel it, like it's really genuine, like they're really welcoming. Like even the staff at the airport that don't even have to talk to me at all, you know? And also my taxi driver, he was so, so nice. He was amazing and he told me that he would give me his number and I could contact him anytime if I need anything. And before, some of you might be thinking that he wanted to hit on me, not at all. He was married, he told me about his wife, his child, anyways. Okay, update number two. I'm now in the new hotel that Booking got for me. And I go to the reception, he speaks English but not so good. And he also tells me that they don't have room. This is insane. Like, I'm so frustrated right now. I'm furious because I'm just so tired like I just want to go to sleep guys I don't know if this is normal or it's just my bad luck a one time only event but if you come to Saudi and please do it with a lot of money so that you book a really good fancy expensive hotel so that at least you know that this is will not happen because the thing is that there's no middle range there's no in between okay so good morning it's the day after already i will explain what happened basically yesterday in the second hotel same problem happened they also confirmed my booking without having any room but the problem is that i was sent to this hotel by booking they were the ones who checked and told me go to this hotel so i would have expected them to double check with them that they really had a room so anyways, second time in a row, this happens to me and then I don't have any more credit to call a booking. I was desperate, I didn't know what to do because if I would decide to look for a hotel on my own, what would assure me that the same thing wouldn't happen again, you know? I didn't have credit to call them beforehand to make sure they had a room, plus they don't speak English, apparently. So am I gonna be spending 30 euros in taxi rides every time to go to different hotels to then arrive there and find out they don't have a room? and? I was so lost. It was nerve-wracking, really. And I was just, at some point, I was just desperate and crying because of the frustration, you know? And one of the staff from the reception saw me crying. He must have felt so sorry for me that he approached me and he said he had an available room in another hotel he was managing and he could take me there and just give it to me for the same price. So anyways, thanks to this good man. And he brought me here, it was like around the corner and I just slept here. My start in Riyadh was a little bit troubled. Let's hope that the rest gets better. Now, yes, let's start the trip, please. Wait, wait. Eat all of this Eat right after having breakfast. So here we have reggaeton in Riyadh, in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Okay, so we are now in, we don't know the name. This is our friend Hassan, no, Haisa, what was your name? Haisa. <laughs> okay, sorry, Haisa. Apparently, you need a ticket to come here. You gotta get it online, even though it's for free. But still, they will scan it at the entrance. Okay, so we're at the historical town of Diriyah, which is the birthplace of the first Saudi state. Today, there are only some ruins left, consisting almost entirely of mud brick structures. This place was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site, by the way. This is like a chill out area, no? Yeah, it is. Looks nice! So basically we have this old town, and instead of letting us walk in the real town, in the real streets, and feel like we're really there, they created this space, according to this guy, like to make it comfortable, <laughs> to have AC while you walk the streets. I don't know. To me, it kind of takes away the magic of the experience, but okay. This is the Saudi way, I don't know. Here we get out and we have it right there. Still cannot touch it. 
Uh, here I can. Also, I don't know if it's because of the way they did the restoration, but it didn't feel to me like I was at an ancient historical site. This is not to say you shouldn't visit, by the way, just my personal experience. You would also find cafes in the middle, and this right here is how they prepare the Arabian coffee. And at the end, they even performed Arda for us, a type of folkloric group dance from the Arabian Peninsula. So the police were in the middle of the road distributing something and we just passed by, they gave us this bag and it's full of chocolates. I mean, how nice it is in this country that police officers give out chocolate to people. <laughs> Next, we did the most Saudi thing. Go to the mall. This is the main attraction and what people do in their free time. They have everything from shops, restaurants, cafes, and even cars, fairs, and much more. I noticed that everywhere is very kid-friendly. You can tell everything revolves around families here. In the morning, the streets were empty, no cars whatsoever, like nothing. Look now, there's even traffic. So apparently people here are in their homes until 4 p.m. Then after 4 p.m. is when they all go out at the same time. By the way guys, we happened to pass through some neighborhoods where they had really amazing houses. They looked more like little palaces. Even the doors were like, wow. You could just smell the money in the air. It's very interesting to see like the type of houses that people live in here, the style and all of that. <laughs> And on day two, we went to the desert, more precisely to a place called Edge of the World. This is a cliff that lies at the end of a 800 kilometer mountain range. We booked a tour and went with a group and it was super fun, though our tour guide only spoke Arabic. Only thing I understood of everything he said was that there used to be a sea at the bottom back in the day. After the hike, we set camp and the guide cooked for us. We had dinner all together Saudi style. That was actually my favorite part of the tour. It was also super cool to meet other travelers and share the experience with them. And we're already on the last day. I went to this local restaurant. Food was delicious, but my favorite thing about it is that it had this area to eat on the floor if you want, like locals do. Then I went to the old city in Riyadh. Here we have the mud brick Masmak Fort, which holds a museum that showcases the history of Riyadh. This is Dera Square, where public executions take place. But at this time it looks a bit different because it was decorated for some event in the light of the end of Ramadan. Right next to Dera Square, we have one of the largest mosques in Saudi Arabia. Look how pretty. And to end the day, I headed to the Sky Bridge at Kingdom Center, one of the most iconic buildings in Riyadh. From here, you get a great panoramic view of the city. See you in the next vlog!